Well, now let's talk about a huge satellite, a massive satellite. Actually, the biggest telescope to ever be sent into space, the James the Webb Space Telescope. Dude, I've, I've heard so much about this telescope. Like, there's so many buzzy news coming out, and I don't know a whole lot, so I'm definitely looking forward to this. Hit me with well, all you got. I, I've heard about it before, and I honestly underestimated it because the mission had been postponed so many times. I was like, oh, like they're probably hobbling everything together at the last second. It's not going to be that good. It's been supposed to, like launch for the past decade right something crazy it's finally like launching december 18th but it, there's a lot of powerhouses behind this and what it's doing is incredible it blew my mind so let's check it out um the folks working on it it's a partnership between nasa uh the united states space agency the european space agency and the canadian space agency so those three are working together to make this super powered telescope international effort i love it yeah but first let's talk about telescopes in space in general um our most famous and our most prominent space telescope to date is called Hubble. And it's really, really good at looking at faraway light. It can view light on a similar spectrum as our eyes can, but just for reference, it's about 745 times stronger, more sensitive than your eye. So oh, wow. okay. it can see things that are super far away. It can see far away galaxies, far away planets that you couldn't even see on earth with a telescope of similar strength because it's, it doesn't have to look through the atmosphere. It's out in space. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, Hubble was deployed a while ago, though, right? Like 1990s. Yeah. And technology it, it, has improved significantly since then. Tech has improved a ton, but let's not discredit Hubble. I mean, I'm, I'm it not basically changed the way that we look at, you know, intergalactic light and astronomy forever. I'm definitely but, not discrediting it. I'm just now like pondering what the James Webb Telescope is going to have. You know, in, in this past like what, 31 years that it's been in development. Like, the tech it has on board has to be insane. What? It, yeah. That well, one saw 745 times better than we do. This one sees, what, 1,000, 1,500 times better? Yeah. This one is 100 times stronger than Hubble. Exponential increase. Even better. So, it's insane. But actually, what I'm most interested in is the way that they developed James Webb was by looking at some of the problems that they had when using Hubble. Okay. So... I've had numerous desktop backgrounds that were photos from Hubble. It takes beautiful photos. I mean, you can just go look it up right now and say, like, Hubble Space Telescope. We'll look it up right now. Um, there are beautiful photos of, like, space dust out in galaxies. I mean, you can almost – you can see some of the space dust from Earth. Like, when you look out at the Milky Way, you see these kind of, like, dusty speckles in the sky. Oh, that is insane. Space dust is so beautiful. And the problem, though – is remember Hubble's looking on the visible light spectrum. Right. That space dust blocks most visible light in certain parts of different galaxies. Makes for beautiful pictures, but it has co basically completely shrouded our sight into deep space anywhere past where there is space dust. Interesting. So it's, it, it's, it's like almost like, have you ever played the game Civilization? I yes. love Civilization. Yes, yes, yes. And you're like sitting on the map and... You know, you can see some areas around you, but beyond that, it's just like a black fog and you can't yes. see past the fog. That's exactly what it's like using Hubble. Okay. You know, we can see a bunch of stuff that's within our visible area, but anything beyond that space dust is still a question mark because we can't see through it. And James Webb is the cheats, the hacks that makes us see past the fog. Yeah. Basically, don't worry about it because remember, Hubble's only using the v small slice of, slice of the light spectrum, the yeah. visible light spectrum. Infrared light is really, really good at passing through these dust clouds due to the longer wavelength. I mean, that's the same reason why you only see red light during sunrise and sunset, because all the blue light scatters throughout the sky and before it gets to your eye, because it's bouncing through dust in the atmosphere, but only the red light gets to you because it's really good at penetrating through stuff because it has a much, much longer wavelength. I, so just I think about that. I not know that at all. That's, that's infrared light in one. Really, really good at passing through dust clouds because of the longer wavelength. Problem is Hubble can't see an IR light. So you can guess what the solution is here. James Webb is a uh, telescope that is designed specifically to take in lower parts of the visible light spectrum. So the reds and oranges and yellows, and then also take in a ton of infrared light. And it can, they send that data down to earth and they convert it into a picture that we can look at with our own eyes, which is really wow. interesting. So um, is, is that the secret sauce for James Webb? is adding that layer of IR light visibility? I mean, that's that's the main thing. That's okay. what it's all about because... It, so here's the spectrum of, that we couldn't see with Hubble because we didn't have the equipment on board that was necessary to do that. 
Now we've added it to the James Webb telescope so we can send data back to Earth and process it and see past the clouds. Yeah, and yeah, not only see infrared light and convert it, we can also see much, much, much further into space. Um, they just like a cool tidbit to think about is any light that we're looking at is almost like staring into a time machine <clears throat> because light take light has a finite speed. It takes time to reach us. It's kind of hard to fathom because light moves so fast, but um, a good reference I like to look at is, you know, when any light that you're seeing from the sun is actually what the sun looked like 500 seconds ago, because it takes light 500 seconds to get to our eyes. So when you're looking at the sun, you're actually looking at what the sun looked like 500 seconds ago. So when you're looking at galaxies that are really, really far away, stars that are really, really far away, they say that this James Webb Space Telescope can look at galaxies, light coming from galaxies 250 million years ago. So it's like the most powerful time travel machine ever because we can look at things that are from 250 million years in the past and it's just taken that long for the light to travel to us. Wait, is it 250 million years in the past or 250 million years after the Big Bang? It might be 250 million years after the Big Bang. I'm not the, sure. Because I've only seen the buzzy stuff, right? And they were saying that what's cool about the James Webb, because of all these advances you can look into the past, almost looking at our own origins. So what you're saying is like the light is taking so long to get to us and now we can see even deeper than we could before. Yeah, and we the the takeaway from that is you can see these, you know, you don't have to see these clouds and beautiful photos, but you can also get information about the galaxies that are behind them. And seeing light from old galaxies might give us an idea as to how our galaxy came about by looking at light from older ones um, to see, you know, what primitive galaxies look like and how they come about and studying them. And I'm going to nerd out real quick with a fact while we're on this. So you mentioned light coming in is the stars that are distant, very, very distant. Yeah. And some of them have already died. So every single second, there are 60,000 stars that we're no longer able to see. And every time wow. that we're not looking at them, that's an opportunity missed by us to understand the world that we're living in. Yeah, so, so it makes sense why people were so upset that this James Webb Space Telescope got delayed so many times. <laughs> Imagine how many stars we missed. That's crazy, dude. But that, I feel like that's why it's so important because now we have like this very brief time period where we can actually observe the universe and understand it. And if we miss it, it's kind of like not coming back. Yeah, and so like the big takeaway here, the explain it like I'm five that I that I'm gonna take, you know, and store it in my brain for later is this James Webb telescope is designed to see infrared light. And what does that do? That allows us to see further. And in space, the further you can see, the older you can see because the light has been traveling from a much further distance. It's older light. Mm -hmm. So it'll allow us to study further and older galaxies than ever before. And going back to my civilization video game reference it allows you to basically stand in one spot and increase the amount of information that you have so your map gets bigger. So we get to map the universe, we get to study old galaxies, and it's basically by making a saddle, or making a space telescope up there that's really sensitive to infrared light. And look, every time you hear someone make a claim about something space related, they say X, Y, and Z, at least in our observable universe, which means as far as we know and we can see, this is what we know. So the more you increase that radius, the more information we can get about how the world actually works. Again, that, that's the important mind-blowing part of all this to me. Yeah, in the same way that Hubble changed the way that we explore other planets. I mean, people have been using these images to come up with new discoveries years and years after the images were taken. We're going to you know, unlock the box to so, so much information using James Webb. I'm really excited to see you know, the ripple effect, all the discoveries that come about me too, man. As a part of this, but let's it's crack also open that just box. An incredible feat of engineering to get a space telescope that's that powerful, that works that well. You know, hopefully doesn't have any issues, and they're going <laughs> to get it up into space, assemble it, and get it working as soon as December eighteenth, twenty twenty one, when they launch, which is super exciting. You know what? And I just we both just built PCs fairly recently, and we need some new background images. So yeah. It would also be great to have some cooler background shots. Yeah, uh, we'll put uh, we'll put a link in here in our show notes. There's some really cool photos of like uh, 
comparing the difference between a Hubble image and what a James Webb image might look like when we can see through the clouds with IR. They're both very beautiful. Oh, I'd love I'm a little to see partial that. to Hubble because they're more colorful, <laughs> but they're both very beautiful. I'm really excited to see what comes from these James Webb and, you know, the, I'm sure, decades of scientific discoveries that will follow. Uh, we're living in the best space age. No one can tell me otherwise. This yeah. is awesome.